Uh, so I am going to start that recording now, um, and I'm going to get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Young, um, and I'm going to try to screen share right now. Uh, one second. Okay. And we're just going to play this here. Perfect. So I uh, hope you're in the right spot. Um, we're today going to talk about our Creative Placemaking Leadership National Summit and uh, building the ideal session. Um, again, my name is Thomas Young, despite what our Zoom conference platform says, um, using my director, Leo Vasquez's account right now. Um, so I'm the creative project manager for the National Consortium for Creative Placemaking. Um, and um, I'm gonna go through this slideshow here. We're gonna basically talk just a little bit about the Creative Placemaking Leadership Summits in general. Um, I'm then going to go into the structure of how the sessions work for our summits. And then I'm gonna go a little bit into the content for the National Summit and what our, uh, the RFP process actually looks like. Um, and so I, I do hope you stick around for the whole journey of what that looks like. And I'd be happy to answer questions either during or if you wanted to save it to the very end, I'll have an opportunity to answer questions then as well. Um, my email is there um, and I'd be happy to send that out as well for anyone if you had any questions or you can reach out to Andrea Orlando who's been communicating with you, who, she's our communications manager, um, to answer any further questions you might have about this RFP process. Um, Okay, so again, um, so the creative placemaking, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm reading off of a thing, so I gotta get myself centered. The National Consortium for Creative Placemaking, um, we're a nonprofit, we're based in New Jersey, Union, New Jersey, um, and we build the connection, capacity, and community with leaders in creative placemaking across the country, like yourselves on this webinar today. We inform, inspire, empower, and support. Um, we lead social change by build, building the field of creative placemaking. In New Jersey, we provide technical assistance, workshops, strategic conversations, webinars like this, um, to encourage more effective and more robust creative placemaking programs around the state. Um, we do have some national programs, like our Creative Placemaking Leadership Summit, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that now. And one of my biggest jobs um, here at the nonprofit uh, NCCP is to organize the content and programming for these summits, which I'm so glad that you're all here today to learn a little bit more about what we're looking for for our Creative Placemaking um, Summit breakout sessions um, and workshops. <clears throat> so just a bit about uh, CPL summits in general. Um, the Creative Placemaking Leadership Summit started about four years ago as a sort of informal knowledge exchange for folks around New Jersey and New York to get together, learn tactics and tips from one another about the field of creative placemaking. Um, it grew into a leadership summit shortly after with the help from the Our Town grant um, from the NEA and our friends from Art Place America, we were able to expand the summits beyond New Jersey this year. So in 2018, um, we went to Chattanooga, Tennessee for our Southeastern Summit in March. That was a load of fun. Uh, we went to Denver, Colorado for our Southwestern Rocky Mountains region. Um, we went to Madison, New Jersey for our Northeastern Corridor Summit. And just in two weeks, we're gonna be going to Charleston, West Virginia for our Appalachian region, which I'm very excited to go to. Um, if you're in the area and wanted to attend, um, we still have tickets available for that registration. That's on J June 21st and 22nd. Um, and we're currently now, um, as I'm sure you're aware, developing our national summit to take place in the DC area in early October. Um, and it's going to act as a summary um, of all of these regional summits and sort of put a punctuation mark on the end of our year. The national summit's gonna take place and it's gonna, it's gonna take a broader look at creative placemaking in general of hopes of uh, creating a stronger local impact around the country over these national dialogues. So the CPL summits value the input and stories of people from across the country and even the world. We've had people from Australia and, and Canada and other places. Um, and they're a place where all types of people can come together from different backgrounds, disciplines, regions of the world um, to learn from each other's experiences in the development, execution, and analysis of creative placemaking. We believe that no one knows everything, but everyone knows something, and that something is worth bringing to the table. So I hope you all today feel empowered to bring that something that you know so well to the table. As we learn from our summits, uh, we're evolving the experience to be useful, engaging, and fun for every attendee. Um, for the National Summit, we plan on creating a much more tailored program for different types of people uh, from varied experiences in the field. Um, 
So we plan on creating a much more, m many more moments of what we call collision um, of ideas and overarching narrative of, of the retreat. And as such, the sessions need to be reflective of this attendee-centered ideals and experiences. And this is really important when tailoring your um, your proposal for the um, for the national summit is thinking really um, attendee centered. How can someone take something away? Um, one of our sayings is uh, we we try to avoid the sage on the stage and work more towards the guide on the side. Um, so basically, thinking more about the takeaways from the listeners, knowing that they also know something that we can all learn from as well. I think is really important. If you haven't been to one of our summits before, we have four different types of sessions for folks. Uh, we have workshops, roundtables, presentations, and field workshops. <clears throat> the workshops are 75-minute sessions where an instructor or two can provide hands-on tools and tips related to a specific topic. Uh, these can have specific takeaways and hands-on activities for the attendees. Uh, for an example, in New Jersey, we had one called How to Activate a Park that Camden Camden experiences, excuse me, uh, Joe Sikora from Sikora Wells Appel Landscape Architects and Sarah Bryan from Cooper's Ferry Partnership in Camden developed a really popular workshop for the Northeastern Corridor Summit. It included a comprehensive but relatively short presentation about their projects in Camden where they designed and built pop-up parks under a limited budget. And what was special about it is they turned to the audience after their presentation to engage them in techniques for identifying and use spaces and making the most out of their um, budgets, resources, and experiences. Roundtables, on the other hand, are still 75-minute sessions, but this is where three or four people can come together to discuss and present their stories, all under the supervision of a moderator. Um, this discussion should open up to the audience and engage them as much as possible. This is super, super important. I know a lot of times people like to develop panels um, where people just kind of talk and they share their thing and then they all go home, um, but we we really focus on making sure that there is a, a attendee aspect to all of these roundtables. Um, the fewer people on these, the better we find. Uh, this gives much more time for richer dialogue with the audience. Uh, again, one of our largest complaints from our surveys is that there just wasn't enough time for interaction and questions um, from the panel. So it's, it's also important to have a diverse panel, not only in like ethnic background, gender, um, age, but also an experience, but also in, um, in organization content and kind of overarching an umbrella making an umbrella for all of these topics to sort of have a larger dialogue with each other is really important. For an example, um, we had uh, one in Chattanooga called Art Place Deep Dive, uh, Agriculture and Food Empowerment, obviously sponsored by Art Place America. Uh, this was led by Javier Torres, formerly from Art Place and now at the CERTNA Foundation. And he basically led a small group of individuals to share their stories of building agricultural programs in various types of communities in the Southeast region of the US. Um, was really great about this one was no one used PowerPoints. Um, they just sat in a circle and told stories and it was really moving and empowering and personal and people responded really, really well to that. So you don't always need a flashy PowerPoint presentation to make a big, make a big impact. Then we have is what we're calling presentations. These are much shorter, they're seven minutes, um, and we limit it for um, a few reasons, but I'll explain a little bit about how we use them. Um, again, seven minute short presentations that are paired with two or three others and what we call a knowledge exchange. Um, and these are essentially like round tables, but basically, um, us, we on our team start to kind of curate these presentations into a larger topic rather than having a proposal of a larger session um, or a larger round table. Um, and again, they, they take a much larger breadth of organizations and projects, but you know, have a really specific topic of comparison and contrast. Um, these should be, these seven minute presentations, if you were to propose one, should be a, a bold example of a project, a series, um, an organization. Uh, they should stand alone, but be flexible enough to pair with other examples. An example of this uh, would be in Chattanooga. We had one called Knowledge Exchange, Creative Examples in Chattanooga. Um, this knowledge exchange in contained three examples of work happening in our host city. Uh, there was something on the Levitt Amp concert series that happened every year, a presentation from the Electric Power Board of Chattanooga and their involvement in the arts, in addition to creative traffic controlled measures for a safer Chattanooga. So again, each of those people presented a smaller seven minute presentation and we curated it to be a kind of interesting rich dialogue about the city and how it's using creative placemaking techniques. Finally, we have what we call field workshops. Um, we accept fewer of these just because they're a little bit more technically complicated. 
But essentially, these are pre and post summit trips uh, where we bring people into the surrounding areas of the venue to explore not only how creative placemaking has impacted neighborhoods, but also how that it also opens up questions about how underutilized spaces can better serve their surrounding communities. These should be within a 30 minute drive or walk from the venue and should um, not only include a tour of a place, which I know everybody likes to do, but it also needs to have some kind of hands on workshop aspect to it. Um, to, um, and, and like a takeaway, a how to sort of tools and takeaways. An example of this in New Jersey, we had one called Unearthing Negro League History in East Orange, New Jersey. Um, this was a workshop that took place in East Orange, obviously. It was about 30 minutes from Drew University. And it took a look at an old Negro League baseball field in the area. Um, it included a tour of the grounds and a short charrette um, with local community members. We had public officials come out. We had the summit attendees, of course. And they all try to figure out how to better tell this sort of unheard story of this uh, really, really important and rich history of this ballpark. Um, this workshop was led by New York City Parks Commissioner Mitchell Silver and was a really special time for everyone who attended. So the National Summit is called, um, <clears throat> we, we use the tagline National Dialogue Local Impacts and the big theme for this one is creative placemaking and change, which I know seems like a really broad topic and it kind of is, um, but we do hope that you sort of tailor your discussions to, um, to this larger theme. Um, it will focus around um, uh, again, the important theme of creative placemaking and change. This, of course, can manifest in different types of topics, which we've outlined specifically for this particular summit. I'll talk about that in a second. We ask that all sessions focus on these certain topics and ultimately tie in local stories to national dialogues in hopes of attendees going out to perform similar changes in their communities. So again, national dialogue, local, local impact. The theme of change deals with both the inevitable and the ways in which we can intervene. Communities around the DC area and around the country experience change every day, whether in the form of gentrification, loss of culture or historic assets, politics, environmental change. At this summit, we will focus on what has been changing and what we as leaders in creative placemaking can do to facilitate, alter, stop, analyze, and or voice certain types of change. And this manifests into, manifests into different subtopics that we've chosen, leading community and change, uh, leading community change rather, negotiating pasts, presents, and uh, possible futures, equitable development and environmental change, um, and, excuse me, environmental justice, uh, artists and designers as change agents, and gentrification and displacement. Um, again, all of which deal with the topic of change, not only in maybe a negative sense, but also in a positive sense, right? Analyzing, thinking, changing, um, moving, and doing. So um, that's my background about the summits themselves. What I'm gonna be doing now, if that's okay with everyone else, is I'm going to share a bit of our um, proposal process itself. Let me see if this will work for me. One second. Screen share. Does everybody see this? Hope you can. Okay. Let me get this out of my way. Okay. So this here is the Creative Placemaking Leadership Summit website. It is cplsummit.org, which is a little bit easier to memorize than the SurveyMonkey uh, RFP site. So um, I do hope that's easier. So again, cplsummit.org. You can go to slash national, um, or if you go up to the about page, you can go to the about national section here. And if you scroll down, you'll notice again that our logos here. Um, registration is not yet open for this particular summit, although if you'd like to browse around, you can see different um, photos and videos from our previous summits, what the topics were and things like that. This talks a little bit about the creative place meaning change, but what you're really looking for here, I'm assuming since everyone's in this webinar, is this submission form. Again, cplsummit.org slash national. Scroll down, you're going to see the submission form. We're going to click on that here. And it's gonna bring us to a SurveyMonkey page. Um, just a couple quick notes about this. First of all, we've extended the due date. I, we just announced that recently, although I think um, this, is, this group will be one of the first to know. We've extended the due date to June 25th at 11.59 p.m. 
Once again, we've extended the due date for the RFP to June 25th at 11.59 p.m. Um, we won't be accepting others after that date unless there's extenuating, extenuating circumstances. Um, so please get your proposals in by that date. So a little bit about the decision process for um, choosing these sessions. Once you send in a proposal, a committee will review your session and will work to sort of puzzle piece the best narrative together for the summit. We will then ask for you to confirm your attendance upon approval. Um, I will then work with each session to develop it and tailor it to our summit and our attendees if need be. So this, this proposal um, should be a little bit flexible. You should be sort of excited to sort of work and, and tailor it and make it um, a part of our narrative for our national summit that we're working so hard to make um, meaningful and impactful. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do now is, this might be a little tedious, but I hope it seems useful and I'm going to give everyone some like tips um, and, and hints, I guess, um, as we go through this proposal process. Um, going down question by question, I'm going to skip a couple questions if they're a little bit boring, but I hope this is uh, useful to folks. Um, again, notice the um, time, uh, oops, that date change should be different there. We'll change that for you since it's such a new announcement. Again, that is June 25th, not 15th, it's extended 10 days. Session title, um, I, I know this seems a little obvious, but I do wanna harp on this just a second before we move on to some other details. It's important that your title is not uh, is succinct. It needs to be detailed. It needs to be eye-catching and digestible. We use titles all over the place from our posters, which you'll see kind of behind me. We'll use them in our program for our advertising material, um, and we'll use them to talk about, you know, in, in surveys and things. So it is really important to keep things sort of eye-catching and different and unique, but also explain a little bit about what you're actually going to be talking about. Um, there's two good examples that I wanted to bring out from our previous summits. One is a longer version and a shorter version. If you're going with a longer title, it should still be eye-catching and, and shortenable. Uh, one of my favorites was called, Look, There's a Beautiful New Mural, There Goes the Neighborhood, A Reflection on Creative Placemaking, Gentrification, and Displacement. Um, so again, a little humorous, uh, talks a little bit about what they're going to be discussing in that um, panel. Um, but it's very memorable and kind of, I hate to say fun, because it's not the funnest topic, but it, it, is, it is a little poking fun at the... Um, at how gentrification and displacement actually sort of get started. Um, a short good title is something that was simply called mural making. It was succinct, it was short, um, people knew exactly what it was and they got exactly what they were gonna get out of it. So a title is really important um, and something that you should spend a little bit of time considering because it will be used so frequently. I'm gonna move down to session type. I discussed this a little bit before obviously, but um, reading through um, the above descriptions between field workshop, panel discussion, or round table, short presentation, and workshop. Um, it's important to think critically about the goals of your submission and how it can be used best to engage an audience. So it is worth talking to, um, thinking about or talking with your team about whether or not this is sort of a takeaway or sort of um, a couple different people discussing a topic. What's the purpose of this um, session and break um, uh, breakout session? Um, obviously, we encourage um, all presenters to be um, present for this three-day summit. Basically, it's gonna be a half day on the first day, um, full day on the second day, and half a day on the third day. We do encourage everyone to attend all three days if possible, um, but of course, there are exceptions to that, and we do just ask you check your calendar and check that off, and we will assume that you will um, be okay with whatever, with that day that we assign you, um, obviously, buying other changes. Um, this is interesting to look at. Uh, so the, it's best to be specific about your topics. I personally find that the best sessions that we get are ones that kind of hone in on one topic. Um, it is fine to talk generally about creative placemaking. We've had a few creative placemaking 101 sessions, for example, that might check off all of these boxes. Um, but it, especially for this particular summit, it might be really interesting to really, really hone in on, say, grassroots change or you know, advancing social and environmental justice or what have you. If you have other topics that you're curious to talk about, you're welcome to input that there as well. And these are not radio buttons, they're check boxes, so you can check as many as you'd like. Here we're talking about the scope. It is a national conversation, but it's important to think about the scope of this project or, or this discussion. Um, I think all sessions should have some sort of national conclusion coming back to the larger context of, of 
America and creative placemaking. But uh, think critically about your audience for this one. Is it really talking about a specific tiny little place? Are we talking about regionally, like thinking about the, 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 the area around Maryland, Virginia, Delaware? Or are we talking about the larger country and creative placemaking? And I think that's going to help us sort of curate a sort of a better narrative for our attendees if, we, if you know that ahead of time. This description here, um, this is really important to note this, this note, uh, question six is for promotional materials. A lot of times in the past we had folks writing to us as sort of, um, you know, uh, promoting what, uh, well, I guess they would, uh, you know, asking us in, in a sort of a first person, please choose our session. This description will be copied and pasted into social media posts, blog posts um, for our program, barring some editing, of course. Um, but please keep that in mind when you're writing it, that it should be succinct, um, almost like an advertisement in a way, um, and something that a lay person can read. So trying to avoid um, technical language would be great for this one as well. It is limited to 150 words, um, which I know is tough because it's, it, there's so much you can talk about. But we do try to um, hope that you kind of keep it succinct and, and tight. Um, I'm sorry, that was for the organization description. So talking about your organization itself, set, uh, question seven talks about the session description itself, both of which again are used for uh, promotional material. Um, and so just thinking about the third person professional voice for a wide range of audiences for both your organization or your work um, and also the session itself that you're proposing. Um, it all, it, I should also say, even though this is used for promotional language, uh, it will be um, what's reviewed by the, um, by, the, by the committee who's choosing these sessions. Um, question eight talks about outline. This is probably going to change as we develop your session over time, but try to think about how you're going to spend your 775 or 180 minutes. Um, hint, uh, you should always, always, always save time for your audience and not five minute Q&A, but thinking about how to really target a rich discussion with audience members. That's, that's a really, really important key that's overlooked by a lot of people. Um, and it's something we're going to definitely be looking for for this national summit is how do you spend a really quality amount of time making sure that the folks that are in the room really get the concept that you're trying to convey um, and also have an opportunity to share their own thoughts and ideas. Um, because again, we should assume that everybody in the room has something to provide um, in terms of um, deeper knowledge. Question nine is an interesting one. We talk about what audience members should know prior to your uh, session. For example, if no prior experience or knowledge is needed, call it a 101 session. Um, what we're trying to do is develop what we're calling tracks for different types of professionals and different experience levels in creative placemaking. Be honest about this um, and think again about your audience. Um, can anyone take your session, basically? You know, it, it can just someone off the street who's excited about mural making, take your session and really, really learn something from it? And if the answer is no, that's definitely an okay answer because we are trying to make it a, a really rich experience for all types of people. If it's something that anybody can come on in, 101 session, you know, talk briefly about the sort of experience levels that you're looking for. But if it's a really seriously advanced sort of workshop or panel discussion that you think requires a little bit more knowledge about creative placemaking, be honest about it. And I think we'll definitely, that's something that we'll definitely need to consider because we are trying these different types of tracks. Um, <clears throat> question 10 talks about takeaways. The committee um, that decides on these sessions typically looks at this question very closely. This is um, probably actually more important than the session description. Um, it talks about what's important for the people to learn. So again, we always come back to the people, the attendees, the folks who are paying money to come to these places that are not just learning and taking notes, but engaging and getting something out of these workshops. Um, as a hint, um, it should be more than here, they are going to learn about my organization or they're going to learn about um, our you know, analysis process or whatever. Um, many people, we've gotten a few comments that folks don't love failed sales pitches. Um, and I know that no one's malicious in that and, and, I, and I hope I don't sound like that, but it, it is very easy to start talking about yourself and your organization um, and getting kind of caught up in that and forgetting about the takeaways that people can have. Um, so you should definitely consider engaging folks with workshops, um, deliverables, takeaways, despite the format of the session. Even if it's a round table, um, what are you presenting that's distinctive, new, innovative, and how can you engage folks in something like that um, to get them really, really engaged? Um, 
And finally, we talk about optional info. You can fill this in as best as you can, um, providing links, um, additional information, your website, portfolio, videos, whatever else you'd need to sort of upload. If you need to send a document, you're welcome to send that to my personal email. Um, and again, I'd be happy to share that. I believe it's at the bottom of this um, survey as well. Um, other information, um, this is, you know, if you didn't get a chance to talk um, about something or there wasn't a question about something that you think is important, obviously feel free to answer that. Um, and then we just go with um, all the contact information. This seems a little um, detailed for, for a webinar like this. The primary contact is super, super important. This is someone who's going to need to be emailed frequently. Um, I'm going to be there communicating with them. Andrea, our communications manager, is going to be communicating with them. So we do hope that there's someone who's able to contact um, and organize a team if it's a panel. Um, and, um, and the like. We also are asking for bios from each of these folks. Um, so we do ask that you keep them to a 50 word limit. Again, third person professional, uh, avoiding professional jargon, um, but keeping it a well-written um, tight bio for us to share on social media and our programs um, and other web content. So I think I've been through most of this. Um, we do ask that you try here to include all the instructors that you have in mind. If for some reason you still need to verify someone, um, you're welcome to send me an email or maybe put it somewhere, maybe in the other, um, where was that, the other information that you'd like us to know. Write a quick little thing saying, you know, we're really considering Jane Doe for this to be in here, but she just doesn't know her schedule yet please hang tight. Um, if anything, we're definitely gonna have our other two panelists to be involved. That's totally fine. Um, we're willing to be flexible about stuff like that. Um, so I think that's everything from, from my end. We do hope that you all take the time in sort of uh, crafting your proposals. I'm more than happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with anyone. Um, I'm happy to schedule 30 minutes or an hour on the phone with you. Um, to have a more lengthy conversation. Uh, but for now, I would like to sort of open it up to the, um, to the folks who are still on the call um, and see if there's any other questions that you might have or if I missed something, um, anything at all. Does anyone have any questions? None? I have a question. Oh, I got two people. <laughs> Take the other one first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. It's Angela Adams from Arlington Public Art in Arlington, Virginia. Um, I'm working on uh, collaborating with uh, someone else who is not on the call today. So what I will likely do is confer with him, um, and then we probably will take advantage of a call with you. Um, so we're thinking we have two different ideas for workshops, basically, that we want to sort of further flesh out a little bit. So would be what would be the best way to approach that? Yeah, great question. So um, I'd be happy if you just send me a quick email. Um, again, I don't know if it, well, I, I'll be happy to send all the registrants my contact information after this. Um, <clears throat> but if you send me a quick email, tyoung at artsbuildcommunities.com. Um, I'd be happy to set up a 30 minute phone call or an hour phone call or however long that we need with um, you and your colleague. Um, and we can sort of talk through your ideas, what you think, what, what might be tailored differently and how best you can make this a really, really successful um, proposal for the National Summit. I'd be happy to talk with you about that. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Andrew, I think you had a question. Oh, yeah. Um, so I saw a box that said, or, uh, would you like to become a sponsor? And I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit, um, maybe in, in general terms. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, we do have a question about sponsorship. Um, if you're willing to be a sponsor for our summits, we do have um, a new, we launched a recent campaign for sponsorships. Um, basically, we're offering um, uh, things from um, expo tables to ad space in our program um, to anyone who might be able to do that. If you're interested in, in sponsoring our event, we'd be more than happy to talk to you after this call. Um, I think that'd be a great opportunity um, for you to kind of get your organizations out there. We're, we're, we're trying to be flexible as possible with folks because I know it's difficult to, to get um, organizations' names out there, especially in this field. Um, so I'd be happy to sort of talk with people about that. Um, thanks for bringing that up, Andrea. You're welcome. That was all. <laughs> Any other questions before we hop off? OK. 
Okay. Well, again, I am more than willing to um, take your emails. Um, I'm more than willing to get on the phone with you at any point. Next week, I'm pretty free, actually. Um, so I'd be happy to get on a phone call with you. I do want to reiterate a couple points before we leave. One is all this information can be found at cplsummit.org. Again, that's CPL Summit, like Creative Placemaking Leadership Summit.org, CPL Summit.org, um, slash national, if you wanted to go right to the national page to get to that, uh, more information like that. Um, once again, we've extended the deadline um, of this RP, um, RFP to June 25th. Um, at 11.59 p.m., so you have that full Monday to sort of uh, sort out those last-minute details. Um, again, I am available to talk with anyone who might need um, some guidance or help uh, or any further questions. Um, and uh, I believe that that is everything. If anyone else needs anything else, please let me know. If not, have a great day. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.